Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great personal pleasure to present the BAFTA Fellowship for 2013 to my dear friend, Michael Palin. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Terry, particularly for those lovely words. Sounds like they may be the last words you're going to say for a while. Um, <laughs> actually, being here tonight on, on the stage together reminds me of the first um, celebrity event that I ever attended. And it was with Terry, and it was a very long time ago. It was 1967. Terry had a basement flat in Lambeth uh, where we used to go and write uh, sketches for anyone who'd buy them. And the council heard about this. They heard about the fact there were two writers for David Frost living nearby and asked us if we would like to be the first two people to use the new toilets that had been erected in Lambeth Walk. Okay, well, it wasn't Madison Square Gardens, but it was an offer. <laughs> so Terry and I went along, duly, with the mayor, to be the first two people to use the toilets. We were shown in, we stood at the urinals, <laughs> on either side of the mayor, whilst the band outside played uh, the Dam Busters March, I think. <laughs> Um, I, I'm not sure about Terry, I certainly didn't contribute much to the, um, <laughs> the occasion. Nothing that would test the facilities in any way. Um, so there we were, people asked where Python get their ideas. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but now from Lambeth Walk Public Toilets to the Royal Festival Hall. Quite a journey, as they say in showbiz. Um, this is a fantastic honour, for which I feel deeply unworthy, but it is a great honour. My friend Neil Innes created a wonderful character of a folk singer, and before he started his act used to say, I've suffered for my art, now it's your turn. <laughs> but here I am accepting an award of a fellowship from BAFTA for basically thoroughly enjoying myself for the last 48 years. And, and I feel sort of slightly guilty about that. I mean, it hasn't always been easy. I remember when we were filming Himalaya and we were going up the Annapurna Trail and I had altitude sickness and felt totally exhausted uh, and we were about to go up a very steep flight of, of, of steps up a path and I noticed at the top two European women who looked down, one nudged the other and pointed at me and I thought, oh God, oh God, but I pulled myself up my full height, tried to look the best I could, walked up those terrible steps as, as best I could, walked by, even gave a gracious little wave as I went. And as I went by, I heard one of the women say to the other, Oh my God, it's Eric Idle! <laughs> a story somewhat countered by the fact that um, John Cleese told me that he once got a free out of hours journey to the Statue of Liberty and back. And when he came back, he thanked the man profusely, and the man said, no problem, just keep on making those travel documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> so, whoever I am, thank you. Um, <laughs> and thank you for this award. I'd really like to thank all the people I've worked with, well, most of them, over the last uh, 48 years. That would take several days. So if I may, 
I just want to thank one or two people who have been absolutely crucial to my professional life. Um, one of them is a man called Robert Hewison. I met on the first day of my first term at Oxford. And Robert persuaded me, a shy boy from Sheffield, that not only was I very funny, but I could be publicly funny as well as privately funny. And he got together a little cabaret act for the pair of us, which was the first time I ever stood before an audience. Um, the first gig I remember he got was with the Oxford University Psychological Society Christmas Party. <laughs> there was absolutely no reaction at the end. <laughs> but they loved it. <laughs> some did, some didn't. I'd also like to thank a man called Ken Stevenson, who was a producer, um, BBC Manchester. And sadly, Ken died last year, but Ken it was who plucked me from the fame of comedy to the relative obscurity of great railway journeys documentaries. He saw in me the chance uh, 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 someone who could possibly present a television documentary. And I did one of the great railway journeys, and thanks to Ken seeing my uh, abilities there, seven years later the BBC approached me to do Around the World in 80 Days. I remember them coming to me and saying, we have got this project, it's an amazing project, very few people can do it. You have the physical power, you have the intellectual integrity, you have the grace, the beauty, the strength, the humour to, to pull this off. And I said, well, fine, fine, I'll do it. And it was only slightly later I heard uh, I was the fifth person they'd asked to do it. <laughs> I'd also like to thank my dear wife, who throughout all this supplied me with maps, atlases, and suggestions of long journeys I'd like to go on. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. For my children, Tom, Will, and Rachel, whose uncanny ability to remember only the most embarrassing parts of my life have kept my feet on the ground all those years. I'd like to thank Anne James, Paul Bird, and Steve Abbott, without whom I wouldn't have got paid for anything over the last 48 years. And last but not least, I'd like to thank the BBC. No other broadcasting company in the world would have given me the freedom to do what I've done for the last 48 years. Thank you all.